This is the Roaring Elephant Podcast, and we're back. We're well in the new year. It's February, and there's still no news. Yeah, <laughs> it's a little bit of a slow news year at this point. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe, maybe. Although we have managed to, can, can you hear this? Hear this sound? It's the sound of me scraping the bottom of the news <laughs> barrel. <laughs> And we did manage to find one little morsel there that I think we can. I think we can cover. I uh, I blame Dave for this one entirely. This is not me at all. Apparently, we're going to be talking about good news for twenty twenty four. I suppose good news if you're a, uh, a hacker group of some kind, maybe. Yeah. Well, not really. I mean, this article isn't about the fact that there's going to be more data breaches, mm-hmm. which would be a bad thing. It's that when a data breach happens, we'll hear about it more often. Which information is good, so I guess that's a good thing. <laughs> and as I say, like it's it's good for the hacker groups because they get more publicity, and we know there's no such thing as bad publicity, right? Well, if a hacker group ever got good publicity, I think something's wrong with the world. <laughs> the only thing that brings, brings to mind is the PS uh, PlayStation hack from a couple of years back which was supposed to be kind of protest against stuff, but even that turned out to be a not-so-good thing. Indeed. Indeed. I mean, this is... I mean, obviously we're going to talk about it because we've already started, but like, <laughs> this is one of those things that it starts off and you think, oh, this is, this is actually a, like a, a sensible policy change. Um, so this is, uh, first of all, like this is uh, an SEC ruling. So this mm-hmm. is very US focused, first and foremost. Um, uh, not just US, but very stock market focused. Very true. Very true. This is not about keeping you safe. It's about keeping the money of the people with a lot more money than us safe. <laughs> yeah. So basically requiring public companies um, to submit a, a filing within four business days of there being a cybersecurity incident. Now, the, the the problem with all of this is that there's one particular word that's inserted in here, that's, and that word is a material um, incident or breach or whatever. And that word is just, that's the get out of jail <laughs> free clause, or at least it muddies what is otherwise quite a, clear set of legislation because you know how does one it first of all the the legislation does not um define what something what a material um sort of breach or incident is and so it's very much left up to interpretation and of course organizations can decide whether or not they think a particular incident was material or not uh, what material or not um, you know it, I would I would imagine if a uh, huge amount of customer data it, it gets exposed that to me would sound fairly material but you know depending on whose uh, whose fingers are on the scales there maybe that doesn't uh, make the cut so on the one hand while this sounds like a, a positive thing like people having to be more open not just more open but more open faster um, to give people more of a heads up that something has happened. Whereas historically, the article mentions this in a few places, you know, it's been 40, 80, you know, 100 d- days, sometimes even significantly more than that before some organizations have mentioned, um, you know, some of their breaches. And it's only when some of the data starts to float out into the, the public mm-hmm. eye that organizations start to own up to these things. Yeah, I don't have that much of a problem with the material word. Because in the end, it's going to go to courts. They will establish precedents. And I think things like material have already been part of precedent. So I think, yes, mm. there's leeway, there's interpretation there. Uh, get out of jail free card. Mm. I wouldn't really go <laughs> that far. But yeah, I mean, it would have been nicer if they had done it more specifically. Problem with specific rules is they can work around it. Just look at yeah. the NVIDIA... Uh, you're not allowed to send these 49s to China anymore. Oh, that's fine. We'll just give it another name. Oh, that's not good enough. Oh, we'll change a little bit here. We'll change a bit there. You can work around it. So very precise ruling also has its drawbacks. 
And in this case, it's kind of in the eyes of the judge, that, I guess, to see if it was material or not. And businesses will have to kind of err on the side of caution. -ish. Yeah. Yeah. The bigger problem I have with the ruling is that it's requiring all public companies to report data breach in just four days. Uh, what if it takes six months to find it? I mean, you can still be very good for security, have everything in, in place, have a seam, have an endpoint security, everything working, but the hackers also get more and more creative. And mm -hmm. there will all, it's a, it's a it's an arms race. There will always be a, a hack somewhere that hasn't been discovered yet and it takes a while to do. Does this mean that if I got hacked by this super duper Gen AI driven, why not? It's all AI today, <laughs> uh, hack attempt and my top of the line security suite didn't catch it up until 14 days a month later, am I automatically in, uh, uh, in jail? I don't believe so. I believe it is from um, detection because what they, what they actually talk about is so many organizations burn so much time um, curating like PR responses to data breaches and stuff like that. Covering it up, just say it as it is. I mean, you know, <laughs> certainly at least attempting to put some sort of spin on things. Um, and I think it's more to, or, you know, my understanding of it is it's, it's from the point that you realize that you have had an incident, um, that it's from that point onwards that the clock starts ticking. Now, That's I think there's... A, a discussion yeah like copyright. there's a question of yeah like how how certain do you need to be like does someone just need to go oh i think we've been breached and automatically the clock starts ticking or do you need you know how much verification do you need that um sort of you, know, you have had some sort of incident and mm -hmm. again it's another thing that i think is a little bit um unclear um as, no. as to exactly what that for me, it's going to go back to what it is already today. The moment the data, because it's specifically about data breaches, not about hack attempts or intrusion attempts, it's about mm -hmm. data breaches, which for me means data leaks. And today, when do companies respond to them? When they appear on the dark web, when the first uh, piece of data gets sold off and is identifiable as coming from company XYZ. And that's, you can't deny at that point that it's clear that it something happened and from that point on they have four days but by then it's all, all over the newspapers anyway so it's a bit of a paper tiger at that point up until the point that the stuff is put up for sale there's really no way of saying for sure that somebody took your data you can detect somebody and got in that they read a file you don't know that they downloaded it of course common sense will dictate that if they got to your very mm. super secret file, they'll probably have downloaded it. But it is a defense to say, yeah, but we didn't have any proof that there was actual data leaked, data access. Yes, data leakage. Mm. You can only guarantee that when it has been found out there and being sold or whatever on the dark webs. Dark yeah. Webs. Did I say multiple dark webs? I'm sorry. Dark web. I, I th again, I think some of this depends because the. It, I mean, so this isn't actually just about data breaches. This is any cybersecurity, any material cybersecurity incident. Now, many of them will be data breaches, but it does say any. Well, the data breach is the one that's that you can the, prove. Right? Yeah, but I think uh, I, I agree in terms of. Um, I agree with what you're saying in terms of the. You know, how do you know? what someone's actually done i think you know in some of these breaches where people have downloaded you know terabytes of data um those ones probably slightly easier to verify um as to where you know that, that data has been accessed and has been copied off the premises etc etc and a lot of it comes down to the the kind of um the forensics of um, figuring out exactly what happened and the timeline and mm -hmm. how long people have had access and and sort of what they what they were doing and some of it comes from you know how people cover up their tracks and you know sometimes that itself leaves fingerprints in things and that that sort of things as well so it I think it, it will be interesting to see how this or if this does really change things. But 
I don't know. I, I, I understand what you're saying around like things like material being, being defined and present being established and that sort of thing. But I don't know. I, I, I can see this reducing the amount of spin and polished time that the organizations, um, feel that they have to, to put together. Uh, a a coherent response or story or whatever it is but i i still i don't know i i still don't really trust that organizations are are going to um acknowledge you, this they're until care of you. They're, they're helping <laughs> you. I, I just don't i don't trust that organizations will will take care of this until as you say in the case of a data breach you know the data pops up somewhere or at least um, negotiations fail mm -hmm. let's yeah. say because uh, you know that's the other thing is there's a lot of uh, ransom type conversations you know there were several well, put some proof up uh, at that point to start negotiations already so yeah 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 but there have been several of those you know recently with um, like uh, PlayStation's Insomniac games losing well, not losing but uh, people gaining access to 1.67 terabytes of data, including passports of their employees, lots of detailed employee details, details obviously of, of games and, and including, you know, playable code and all that sort of thing. And like, that's the, that's the sort of thing that I think is quite obvious to, to see out there. I think some of these other things are a little bit more nuanced. Hmm. On the other hand, I mean data leakage. I mean, would we have a Gen AI hype at the moment if we didn't have the Llama two source code being uh, hacked and distributed? Mm. <laughs> now, one thing I did miss in the article is uh, consequences. I don't. I, I read through it a couple of times, but I didn't really see. Okay, if you do not do it within the four days, then what? Do you get delisted? Probably not. Um, I mean, the EU has been very successful with data protection laws because they have expressed fines as a percentage of uh, money the company makes. So not just a fixed fine of 10,000, a million, whatever, but hey, you make a billion per year. Well, 10% is ours now. And that has had an effect, I think. In this one, I haven't really seen any kind of... Yeah, what, what are the teeth here? What's, what's the stick behind the door? I don't know. I don't to know. be honest, oftentimes these data breaches things, the main problem for the companies is the reputation loss. The monetary mm. loss of things like that is way less. It's only when it becomes known and now they are known as a non-secure environment, especially for financial situations, uh, for financial organizations, stuff like that. That's basically reputation that you can never uh, claw back again. Um, so I'm actually wondering if fines would actually have an effect here. I don't know. And in fact, even the um, the SEC press release d does not mm -hmm. at all mention any form of um, um, penalty or sort of enforcement around it. The SEC does have kind of standard things, right? I mean, if you're caught for insider trading, you know what the problems are there. So maybe mm -hmm. they just categorize this as one of the already defined things, but again, no information available. Yeah. The other thing that this talks about is um, the being a little bit more specific about the the type of um, content that um, that you share when you're notifying. So there are some rules around um, the giving more details about an instance nature, its scope and its timing, um, which is the sort of thing that, you know, has been a lot more opaque um, previously. So I think some of the goal here is sort of also increasing the transparency of, of you know, how, um, yeah, the, the scope of these actual incidents, which I think is, is interesting but again it's quite light on information here it seems to be quite a little bit on the vague side and even the um you know there's, there's no or at least i couldn't find um any sort of further details on 
It's also not really the yet. first thing, apparently, because when I was talking about the EU, I thought, hey, what's the EU stance on this whole data breach thing? And I actually found a press release where in December 12th, 2018 already, so that's way back already, apparently mm. every EU institution must uh, expose personal data breaches within 72 hours of becoming aware of the breach, comma, where feasible. That's probably mm. because there's some security agencies underneath the European uh, umbrella which aren't allowed to or won't do this. Yeah. But this is 72 hours. This is uh, way less than four days, right? Yeah, yeah. And this is a government institution, and to be honest, you would expect commercial entities to be a bit ahead of the curve here and governments to be running behind. Mm. But uh, to be honest, I do work with a lot of gov government customers. Security has really been a major theme for them for the last couple of years. Yeah. Yeah, I can definitely see that. I can definitely see that. And I, I also think that the governments are also sort of those those areas where they have to be seen as um, wherever possible yeah responsible especially for public um, data as that was that was talking about personal data uh, sort of it's also a bit because they can't be mad at companies doing it badly if they do it, doing it worse i mean <laughs> <laughs> it, it, you can't just do the do as i say not as i do thing right <laughs> yeah but but on the eu side i don't know what the penalties are if you don't eat that as you say there's obviously the the reputation and the lack of uh, trust no, is the big one this but. is part of the gdpr thing right gdpr is the safety of uh, personal data and if that gets leaked there are mm. fines and those fines are expressed as percentage of money you make as a company per year yeah uh for most of it i mean i don't know all the details i'm, I'm yeah. not, not a lawyer here no whatever legal advice whatever but yep. uh, no, I mean, these things, they have to eat. I mean, when I talk to my government customers, it scares them. And, I talk yeah. to the, and when my colleagues talk to the co commercial entities, it's also because of the fine ability that they really start uh, not just investing in cool hype software, but actually stuff that works. Yeah, no, that makes sense. But yeah, the, the SEC one does seem a little bit light on teeth. So... It kind of reads as a checkbox. Uh, oh, it's data procedures are important. As SEC, you're an important company. I guess we should do something. Let's put up a press release that they should. Oh, let's give them four days. <laughs> it doesn't really feel very... It's the reason it was at the, at the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> yeah. I can't... I can't even see... Oh, people, for people who are watching here, this is Dave uh, doing some live research. It's very yeah. exciting. Uh, people on YouTube can actually see the little beads of sweat going on his forehead. The He's almost there. Turning. He's getting there. I'm getting a flashback yeah. of the There's, meatloaf song now. <laughs> <laughs> there is zero um, mention in the, uh, even in the, the actual ruling, SEC ruling doc mm -hmm. um, of, any form of fine. Like, no, I couldn't find anything. Not, not, none whatsoever. So, yeah, a little bit weird. So, yeah, it's America. It's totally normal. It just seems a little bit strange that like this, this should get sort of publicity when it, it does. I think you mentioned the word paper tiger. It does seem to be a little bit of like all noise, no substance. But origami is cool. Fair enough. All right. Well, on that note, anything else from you? Uh, nope. I think we've beaten the paper tiger to death. Well, that's very sad. <laughs> Could at least set fire to it. It's paper. It's okay. <laughs> well, in that case, that is all the time we have for today. You can support this podcast by becoming a Patreon. Every contribution really does help. We are on YouTube. You can watch me live researching, searching, and failing. <laughs> Um, you can hit like, subscribe, and the notification bell, all the YouTube things. You can also go to roaringelephant.org for a link to our Patreon page and for more information about the podcast. Please do send any feedback you have to podcast at roaringelephant.org. And until next time, my name is Folding Paper Dave. And my name you can find on the dark web somewhere. <laughs> Along with your social security number and all the other details. 
and we look forward to talking to you next week. Goodbye. See you then. <laughs>